What's up, man? It's Master Wills. I'm in Louisville at the Louisville Arcade Expo Expo with my buddy uh, Joe Stith here, aka Luigi. Hello. <laughs> We're glad to have you guys out here. Uh, appreciate the Lexington love. Um, did you guys want me to tell you a little bit about what's going on, yeah, how yeah, this yeah. came to yeah, be, please. all that good stuff? Okay. So me and some friends, Jeremy Flights and Matt Flights, they're brothers. They had a whole bunch of pinball machines. Okay. I had a ton of old classic consoles and old TVs and I'm just a huge gamer from the 80s. Yeah. And we said, you know, what happened to Louisville? Why do we no longer have arcades? Why, why do we no longer have retro gatherings or anything like that? And we said, we got to do something to solve this problem. And we said, we love Louisville, we love gaming. Let's have the Louisville Arcade Expo. Let's put all these things together. So we got together and we decided we would throw it here at the Holiday Inn off of Hurstbourne. And we contacted a lot of folks who had a lot of machines and see if it would work and get it all together. And it has. I mean, this is a pretty massive operation. Like, how many rooms do you have here? What, well, what we've done is we've got the one, the Grand Ballroom, the Churchill, we love that name. And that has all of our pinball machines and our video arcade machines. And we have about 50 or 60 pinball machines, classic from the 60s all the way up through the 90s. We have about 20 to 40 video arcade machines. We got 101 Fighters, we got your classics Pac Man, Galaga, Donkey Kong, a um, few other just random ones there. Yeah, all the greats, man. Everything. Like, you know, just walking through here is like going back to my childhood. Like, Absolutely. We got you know, we grew up together, you know, on, on console games, man. We had a group that was really serious about gaming. Like, uh, I just remember the old days Mario Kart. Absolutely. Or, uh, for uh, Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo uh, the, yeah, the original 16-bit yeah. action. We uh, we had uh, some tournaments here as well. Yep. Um, we had a Super Mario Kart tournament. It was oh, a battle okay. mode. Awesome turnout oh, for that. Man. I mean, we, we rolled it in several different ways. Had a great champion. We had some trophies for that that we made, customized. Uh, I'd show them to you, but we already handed them out, mm -hmm. and people loved them so much. I mean, not, they're they're probably in display cases as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, but to let you know a little bit more about kind of the overall thing here. Yep. What we wanted to do is we wanted to create an experience for people. Because, yeah, when we were kids, going to the arcade, you got in there, you heard the bleeps and the bloops, maybe the floor was a little bit sticky because you were just kind of this gaming dungeon of awesomeness. And we wanted to kind of replicate that without the stickiness and without the smoke, you know, but with the fun. And so we have that one big room with the arcade machines and the pinball machines, but we have three other rooms that have specific consoles from the different eras. So like the 8-bit, you know, like the Atari 2600, the regular Nintendo, NES, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, the big heavy hitters, and all the classic, you know, like one-on-one -on -one fighting games, shooting games, the power pad. We wanted to show, you know, we wanted to make it a show, you know, by nerds, for nerds, first and foremost, but secondly, we wanted to make it a fun family event you know like when we were doing promo events and we promoted with some really great partners that we have here uh, uh, one of them was the Derby City Roller Girls and we did an event out there where we set up a table and I had you know like an Atari 2600 set up and I had like a Super Nintendo set up and like the moms or young moms or young dads would show up and they'd be like oh awesome the Atari 2600 they'd have like a little like you know four or five year old they'd be like go ahead honey play the game and someone took like the Atari controller and held it upside down and they, they didn't know how to use it, you know, it's a joystick. And they were like, well, uh, what do I do? And it only has, you know, like one button. So they're, get, they're getting owned on like Pitfall or, you know, Yars Revenge or even Pac-Man. And then the mom steps in or the dad, you know, in their early 30s or whatever and just, ah, 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 and just like destroys it. And it was really neat to see parents get to finally school their kids into classic games. Whereas today, you know, kids, you know, on an Xbox 360, there's 12, 15 buttons me old timers like me just we get confused and you know my brain's like eight bits so that's what, I, that's what I love like I, I haven't seen all the stuff here I've not seen like one Xbox one one Xbox 360, no. one, yeah, one PlayStation you're, you're, 3. Right, because it's totally retro and awesome, man. You're not going to see it because one of our taglines is we draw the line at 99. So that's where we stop it. We started in the 70s. If you want to go before the 70s, yeah. you're, you're grandfatherly, you're, you're, you're in. You're in. We're not going to hate that. But if you're, if you're trying to get past 99, I'm sorry, we're going to have to nix that. So This is what I love about uh, like retro gaming is like I feel like the new stuff is just so graphical, so complex with the buttons. 
fun. Yeah. You know, where's the, where's the real gameplay that we have that people are pulling off with like 8-bit console systems? Where's the love? Where's the love? Where's and, the love? And what I, what I like to tell people is, in those days, the developers or the programmers, they were artists. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing was they had such a level of creativity, they had to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And their own their canvas, if you will, was video games. Yeah. And and they, they just put their heart and soul into those things, you know? And nowadays it's like a corporate money-making machine and it's like Oh, we must make, we must sell five million copies of the newest Grand Theft Auto, yeah. and our development team is two thousand people. You know, and it's like it's like the movie reels. You know, at the end of a movie, it's like, let's see who all worked on this. Yeah, yeah. But when you beat like, let's say Pac Man, it says like two names, yeah. like two guys, ton of time in a garage somewhere, and a ton of love put into the game, and you get yourself a classic. You know. Exactly. So we had some rocking trophies. Yeah. For the Duck Hunt shootout, for instance, we had a golden gun mm -hmm. for first place, spray painted yeah. gold by uh, yours truly, a silver gun, and then we had a cool little pixelated Duck Hunt, you know, a little graphic of the duck itself, and then luckily a, a really cool guy who brings in a lot of arcade machines to help support our show, his name is Jonathan, donated a VS Duck Hunt, that's a rare arcade version of Duck Hunt, where you can actually shoot the dog. Uh, I didn't know that until I actually played it uh, for any of you Duck Hunt, you know, nerd gamers. That's kind of cool, and we gave those as prize awards for that Duck Hunt shootout. We're here with Brandon, fourth place in Duck Hunt. Stiff competition out there, Brandon. How'd you do? Uh, pretty good. I did a lot better than I thought I would, yeah. How long have you been playing? I've probably played like five times. Really? Yeah, really? Like, not very often at all. Since you don't play that game very much, what are your favorite games to play? Mmm... Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. I'll tear you up with uh, uh, Blanca. You know what I'm saying? That's the only one I played back when I did play that game on Super Nintendo. Yeah. Blanca. All yeah. I knew how to do was just press the punch button until lightning came out. Right. Me too. I didn't know anything. That was my secret. Don't give it away. Uh, so what do you do in the meantime other than play games? Piano. Piano. Wow. Game Nation, my man. I'm Jesse Anderson. I'm not the guy who got killed with Jeffrey Dahmer, despite <laughs> what Wikipedia says. <laughs> Jesse Anderson, number one in the Duck Hunt shootout, and his training partner? Jake. Jake. I went down in round two, uh, about the seventh or eighth duck. Where did you Where did you end up? Hey, you guys are the news crew. I wasn't keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> what hey. round did you make it to? Um, at, at least seven from my count. I know I made it at least that far before the other guy. I'm pretty fell. sure that one of the rounds I watched went to the 12th. Yeah, the, that I did see that. Um, I was not participating in that round. But you beat the guy that got to 12. Yes, okay. yes I did. Very nice. Yeah, what do you think about the trophy? I like my trophy. It is a very sexy trophy. I actually competed in the competition. I went down really quickly, um, and then I turned around, and saw the trophy, and decided I wanted a redo. They weren't giving it to me. Use the iron sights, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell me just a little bit about what you were just telling me about how you uh, control the ducks and were able to boost in the number one. A lot of people really don't know about this, but uh, if you put a uh, actual controller in the uh, second control point, then you can uh, control the ducks uh, with the D-pad. Get really crazy. Uh, it's right there in the instruction manual, but nobody read the instructions back then. Right. Guys, uh, what do you do with your spare time when you're not gaming? Uh, I am an artist. I have been sculpting and making uh, various things. I I recently made the uh, black marker uh, from Dead Space into a uh, little 
paper statue. Very cool, man. Do you uh, do you get do you sell any of your stuff online? Is there anywhere where people can find your products? Uh, so. I've sold a few things to some friends, but I have, have low self confidence. <laughs> what are your pastimes? Anyways, I'm a I'm a full co full time college student. I I do programming and stuff. Uh, what college? Uh, Western Kentucky University. Oh, okay. I attended there yes. back in the day. I I played bass guitar and read graphic novels. Really? Yeah, basically, probably what everyone else here claims to do. Right. I've well, actually uh, uh, made a uh, couple of comics recently. Uh, one of them being about uh, where to get, uh, yeah, about mass producing nightmare fuel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. He can scare people. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't click on his history folder. It's for the best. <laughs> What other games do you guys like to play? Uh, m mostly like RPGs and shooters and stuff. Favorite RPG, favorite shooter? Breath of Fire 4 and Super Mario RPG. I'd have to say uh, Knights of the Old Republic for favorite RPG, but Mass Effect is an RPG and a shooter. Right, exactly. Alright, this is from number one, best game ever. Superman 64. <laughs> What do you say? Uh, huh? It's a mad. They're conferring. Captain Novelin? Yeah, Captain Novelin. Captain Novelin. <laughs> you got it right here. Got first. a diabetic superhero. He's awesome. <laughs> he fights cookie monsters. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody. Is it LV or uh, LV? L E V E L. Eventlevel.com. Eventlevel.com. Go to it. We also had a Super Mario Brothers 1 challenge. We called that the Kentucky Nerd Bee. I, I, it's a play on Derby. It may work, it may not, but we thought it'd be kind of fun. That was a neat one. We had some trophies for that. But some of the trophies that still exist, if you'll just come this way. So the last tournament, the last tournament that we have is, is the Pac-Man tournament right here. So this is the grand grand prize for that. And what I would like for y'all to hear is, so it's a it's a cool looking trophy, you know. The, it's got the arcade cap at the top there, you know, very nice looking here. But if you put it up to the speaker here, this machine actually turns on. I hope your fans can hear this. So that type of stuff. Rob isn't really a giveaway, but I mean, if, for your old school NES friends, he's just hanging out. He guards the trophies, if you will. I mean, if anything were to go on, I mean, these things are like hydraulic clamps. I mean, if he gets a hold of you, there's no possible way that, you, that you're going to get loose. I mean, that's just the way it is. Now, we also have a couple of trophies for, for best in show for the arcade machines themselves. This is the gold Atari joystick. You know, that's just for the best looking arcade machine. We, we want to, you know, reward folks for helping us out by bringing machines for people to play and put on free play. Because this would not have happened if it hadn't been for the great Louisvillians and the great collectors who have supported us with their pinball machines and their arcade machines. And even some of the folks that have helped me in the console rooms with their, their, their specific secret console games or machines or even just their support, their knowledge, you know. We're super nerds, and we know just about everything about all these games, but a lot of folks don't know all that stuff, so it's really cool to go in there and say, oh, hey, dude, this is the this is the Atari 2600 game you want to play, not E.T., <laughs> which uh, we can play that later if you want. Pac-Man, you have the power pellet, and they had like one dot left. Yeah. And where it's on the speed up ROM, 
I went down to get the power plant and go back and get all the ghosts because none of us had missed any ghosts. Yeah. But because I cleared the board, it was like the last dot, yeah. like the power plant and the dot. So I, I couldn't go for any ghosts because I, I went down too far. And I, you know what I mean? I, I'm here with Jonathan Callahan, the runner of the Pac-Man tournament. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, basically what it was is that we had three prizes for the tournament. We had a trophy, an original marquee out of the machine, and an original manual. About all you had to do in the tournament, uh, you were given three minutes to actually uh, get as many ghosts, as many uh, fruits, uh, practically everything that's within the maze that gains you points. And you had to outwit, you know, the next person. You know, it, but it's by, it's all a matter of points. Yeah, but there's also like speed involved. Because right, you it's have got to a do factory speed up chip in it. It's no, there was no hacks. No modifications, no nothing. It's just all original. It's still one of the very cra uh, craved games out there. I mean, the, you, if you see how many people like to play Pac-Man, it just draws them in, man. I just wish there would have been more people to play the uh, machine and actually enter it, because they're all interested in the other ones, but still, yeah, it was still a good tournament. I have always wanted one of those machines, and when I went to an operator, he said that I could have it, you know, for very cheap. I'm not going to mention how much, but it's still yet. Yeah, I took on the liberty of restoring it, and it's still unrestored, but you know, it would make it makes a great conversational piece. What were the other machines you brought here? Um, Spy Hunter, Donkey Kong, and Galaga are the only other ones I brought. I did have a cocktail table and I sold it. Jonathan Callahan, man. Thank you very much. This tournament was awesome. This whole event was awesome. So thanks for being a part of it, man. I'm really appreciative of being here, man. I brought out other machines for people to play. You know, they they were just sitting in my basement and done what they've been doing for the last 10 years. Congratulations to Fred, the winner of the uh, Pac-Man tournament, the true gamer, the real gamer, man, right here, Fred. So how did you get so good at Pac-Man? Oh, I just played it since I was a kid, so. Oh, yeah? <laughs> When you first started playing Pac-Man? Probably, I was probably 12 or something, 11 or 12. Well, is that on the Atari or real arcade? Arcade. So what do you think about the uh, what do you think about the uh, arcade expo? That was pretty good. I brought a Donkey Kong cocktails over to the other side of the room over there. So. Okay. Cool. So you you do, you donated an arcade game? Well, I brought it. I mean, it's my idea. Well, I just yeah, it from I mean, show. Yeah. Borrowed it for the arcade expo. Yeah. Welcome to the expo. You just won that. Yep, I just wanted to place third in the Pac-Man tournament. So nice, yeah. incredible. So how did you uh, how did you get so good at uh, Pac-Man? I don't know. I just played a lot. I just played a lot and practiced. Do you? So are you a fan of Miss Pac-Man or Pac-Man? I I can choose either one. I, yeah. I'm better at Miss Pac-Man, but still. Let me ask you this: Do you think Miss Pac-Man's hot? It's a pretty sexy little. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell from this picture, but she, she, sure. <laughs> we'll go with it. All right, man. So, what do you think about the uh, uh, expo so far? It's awesome. I was here. I was here. I was here yesterday, and it was, it was, it was great. What, what are your favorite games of all time? Your top. Let's say top three favorite games of all time. Uh, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and Frog. And uh, yeah, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and Frog. All three classics, man. All three classics. All right, man. Well, uh, congratulations. So what's your name? Tara. Tara, I'm a huge uh, Pac-Man fan. I do like Pac-Man. I'm not doing something right now. Uh -oh. oh. More nerd. Oh. Yeah, what are, what are your favorite uh, video games of all time? Uh, I like Monkey Island, uh, King's Quest VI. Uh -huh. um, I like uh, Smash Brothers, Ocarina of Time. Uh, I like Elder Scrolls, uh, Elder Scrolls. 3, Morrowind. So what's your favorite console? That's like uh, 64, isn't it? Smash Brothers? I do like the 64, but I also like um, the uh, PlayStation 3 because it's pretty cool. And I like all the free games you can get with it, like yeah. downloadables and stuff like that. Um, I found out about it through Facebook. Um, I didn't see any like physical flyers or anything about it. Yeah. so. It was kind of like, awesome. Yeah. I didn't know they were having a retro gaming thing here, so I just hope it's here next year. Yeah. And I, 
I found out that there's also an arcade place in Louisville, like on Crestwood or something. So I'm really excited about being, like going and trying that out. So because I really like all these games, and I wish I had time to play them all. So it's really fun, and everyone's really friendly, and like you can just walk up to someone and be like, "Hey, can I play with you?" And they're like, "Sure." I mean, I think everyone's just excited that there's a bunch of people who like games and playing arcades, and it's just the fun, friendly, interactive atmosphere. So. It's awesome. Kara, thank yeah. you. Now you you started like uh, collecting. Did you start you started collecting these uh, arcade games yourself, right? You're a classic. Uh, I started really collecting on classic consoles in the early '90s, and uh, a place where me and uh, Master Wills is that. Did I get that right? Is from had a place called Video Vault, and they started. Uh, like just selling off their old tapes and all their old video games and I said you know I don't have a lot of money and Super Nintendo is beautiful and so is Sega Genesis but I can't afford it so the, the NES cards they got discounted let's collect them up so that's kind of how I got started but there's a lot of neat guys here who have did the same thing but with a, on a different medium if you will where that whether that be pinball machines or arcade machines and as the arcade or as the arcades in America started to die off they started to do a lot of arcade auctions, so we went and grabbed some of them a little bit on the cheap. They were probably beat up, but repaired them, got them back to life, and brought them here so that people could say, Whoa, why did arcades die again? Because this is awesome. If you all go inside, you just walk in there. It's, it's dark. You can see the lights from all the machines bling. It's beautiful. Just close your eyes, and you'll think it's 1989 again, and you'll be happy. I promise you. It's great, man. Um... It's got a great vibe, man. Great vibe going on, man. You're taking me back to uh, my childhood. I'm getting misty-eyed. I mean, some of the love is all here. I mean, Virtual Fighter 2, one of the original yeah. 3D fighters. Missile Command, you can't beat that. I mean, that's a Cold War classic, you know. We're defending missiles from I mean, hitting well, us. Commando's the original, obviously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, Spy Hunter. On the other side, you might see a Galaga. We got a, a Pac-Man there. Uh -huh. We got the tournament Pac-Man going on right now. Uh -huh. Let's see what else. Battle Zone was originally designed by the U.S. Army. It's a tank battling game. It's not on right now because it was sold. Uh, Centipede. Centipede. Bubble Bobble. I mean, if you know about Bubble Bobble, you are an old school gamer, and I have mad love for you. Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal saw. Kombat 2 is in the back corner. We got a DDR back there as well. So don't worry about the you know tagline of we don't go past 99. DDR originated in 96. So, Doug, we're all good there. All right, just just want to throw that disclaimer out there. Along this wall is pins, all pinball machines and stuff, and you will have a blast if you can get on one of them. I tell you what, they've been running full nonstop for the last, gosh, 72 hours or something like that. So, part of the things that we want, we wanted to make this a show that people would, would really enjoy by having really great prizes. So, we had a pinball tournament, an official sponsored pinball tournament, and I'm not the pinball specialist, so if I say this wrong, please forgive me, Jeremy and Matt and Derek. Derek was the guy who ran it. He's also from Lexington. Awesome guy. It's an IFPA sponsored tournament, so it's an international tournament, and it's ran like NASCAR. So, that means that, like, each city or each expo or each convention has a certain point value. So, if if you win, you know, if you lose Louisville, but you win all the other ones across the country or across the world, you could still be the pinball wizard or whatever that champion is. And, and pinheads, I'm sorry if I don't get that right. The grand prize for that pinball tournament was an actual pinball machine. And if, if you get a chance, please interview Jeremy and Matt about that. There's an awesome story. They actually went to a barn in Kentucky that was featured on the show American Pickers. I don't know if you've seen that on uh, the History Channel. He was already on there, and he thought that they were also pickers. They had seen a pinball machine in the in the corner of a picture on Craigslist and just saw like one little like letter and said, oh my gosh, I know what that machine is and went down, got it, restored it, put it back together, and that made for the prize. Are you a pinball? Yes, the Doctor Who pinball is so much fun. Pinball is really cool, you know. It's definitely something you can't emulate. It's just, it's right there, it's living history. We're here with Jeremy Flights, and he was just telling us about a special pinball machine that is restoring. Tell us a little bit. Okay, basically uh, we uh, were having a pinball tournament here, and we wanted to give a really nice prize for first place. And we, we, normally they give a cash value prize. Uh, what we ended up doing is uh, we found an old 
Williams Space Shuttle pinball machine in a barn in the uh, middle of Kentucky, about 45 minutes uh, east of Forest Cave. Uh, my brother and I, and so we went down there and uh, we picked it up. Um, it had a lot of leaves and uh, you could tell a couple animals had been into it. <laughs> and uh, so we, we basically stripped it all the way apart. Uh, we started cleaning it, went through all the circuit boards, replaced uh, some components, um, had some acid damage, and we cleaned up all the acid off the, the battery acid. And, uh, we actually used, uh, we used that and contacted a lot of parts vendors. And we had tons of, uh, a few parts vendors, especially Mark for Specialties, that donated about $500 mm -hmm. in parts. The, the person that we bought it from was on American Pickers. Uh, his name was Tui, yeah. and it was on the episode called Frank Flips. And uh, he actually lives around Richmond, Kentucky. And he just so happened to uh, be selling this, this this group of pinball machines from outside of Horse Cave, Kentucky. And he's selling these old 1940s wood rail machines. Mm -hmm. And in the back of the picture that they have on Craigslist, we just saw this little astronaut on the side of the machine. And sure enough, we knew exactly at that point that was a space shuttle because there's only one machine that has an astronaut on it. Uh -huh. And uh, and so you know, I, we had, I asked him how much he wanted for it, and he named a price and. Haggled a little bit. We got it for 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, after all the parts and doing the restoration, I'd say it's worth at least 1,400. That went wonderful. Um, we were expecting probably 500 people for the whole entire weekend, and uh, Friday alone we had 533. Uh, Saturday we had about 1,100 people come through. Not really sure about Sunday yet, uh, but uh, the just the participation from the local community and the surrounding community was was amazing. We had a very low marketing budget. And uh, just because of um, uh, you know news news feeds and uh, websites and forums and just everybody just you know picking us up and covering some stories on us, just really helps spread the word. And and yeah, the gaming community just, just came through for us. Um, the tournaments helped a lot. Uh, it was it was just an amazing time. Who favorite game of all time? Uh, I'm gonna have to probably say Game Plan Cyclops, 1985 pinball machine. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, it's nice talking to you, Jeremy. All right, thanks. Nice talking to you. Yep. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate nice. it. All right, so here in the uh, arcade, in uh, Classic Arcade and Pinball Room with... Uh... Uh, my name's Derek Fugate, and uh, I'm currently uh, uh, ranked 37 in the pinball rankings. Uh, we do the World Pinball Player Rankings. We're running a pinball tournament here for the uh, Louisville Arcade Expo, and, and uh, it went over great. We had over 155 people play in the pinball tournament uh, over Friday and Saturday. They gave away a pinball machine, which is the Space Shuttle pinball machine for first prize. And uh, yeah, it was just a fantastic time. We had, just like I said, we, that's the most people I've seen play in a tournament. And I travel all around the country playing in pinball tournaments, and that's a, that was a lot of people. Were they? Did you see some real serious competition? Yeah, I mean, there were some guys from the Ohio Pinball League that were here. Uh, there were some guys from Chicago. I know uh, Eric Fisher flew in from Texas, um, and I always go down to the Texas Pinball Festival, so it was nice to see some people travel from around. And, and they're all they're all high ranked players. We had. So I think we had three or four players in the top 50 ranking here, which was really cool. Um, but we, like I said, we, we finished up the pinball tournament last night, and uh, time that got done was about midnight, and it was just crazy. How many of these like uh, conven conventions do you do or expos do you usually travel to? How many uh, have you done? A year, I usually do. Uh, I usually pr try to go to at least maybe maybe eight or ten. Mm -hmm. And um, so right now it's always in the spring and it's always in the fall when yeah. they're the most of them. How so, would you rate this one? Like, this was a really fun play. This this tournament and environment was very fun because I liked it because they have the lights down kind of dim. It gives it that old kind of classic arcade feel. And uh, the game selection, I came in and, and, and picked out some of the games that we were using for the tournament out of the game. So we used an all Williams lineup. So, you know, we had the old, starting with the old game, we had Apollo, then we had Williams High Speed, Williams Jackbot, which is a, a copy of the old Pinbot, and then uh, No Good Gophers. So those were all very good classic games for pinball tournaments. What's so. your favorite uh, pinball game ever? Gosh, my favorite game. That's hard to say because I, I like the old I like the old mechanical games and I like some of the uh, some of the 80s uh, games. Um, I would say as far as new games go, I like some of the Stern um, Simpsons Pinball Party or maybe uh, you know Lord of the Rings is a great game uh, as far as new games go. 
those are probably the two deepest rule set games Stern ever made as far as deep rules that are really good games. So those are some of my favorite new games. I'm here with Derek Fugate, the uh, number 38 pinball player uh, in the world, I'm going to say, or pinball.com. But uh, man, it's great talking to you, and this is a great event, man. Yeah, yeah, I had a great time here and enjoying it, and it's uh, wonderful. Hopefully, uh, they'll do this again next year. All right, all right, man. Thanks. Take care. Behind you is our, our video arcade machine, Commando. And Commando was another tournament that we ran, and this was a Dare to Care tournament. So the entry fee to this tournament was one canned good, or if you didn't have a canned good, you got. You could enter one dollar, and all proceeds from the dollars would go to Cosair Children's Charities. Wow. Right, and so today a fellow named Rocky ended up winning this machine, and I think we got several hundred canned goods, and I believe several hundred dollars that we're going to be giving to Cosairs over that. So, unfortunately, he doesn't have a truck. He lives in Lexington, so we appreciate, again, the Lexington love. We're going to find a way to make sure he gets that machine uh, successfully back to his place. Sup? How's it going? What's going on, Rocky? So you, you defeated Commando. What was the yes. tournament? Yes. The, uh, the tournament was the top score. Mm -hmm. And my score was, let's see, I got it right here, 1,046,400 points. That's incredible, man. It's a, it's a pretty That's high a Commando score. Yeah. So uh, when did you become such a beast on Commando, man? Well, uh, you know, when I was living in uh, Washington State, a friend of mine worked at a tattoo shop and they had Commando there and I would hang out there and play Commando a lot. And that's sort of where I learned about the game and, uh, you know, started playing it. I was very determined to win this machine. I've been here since Friday playing it nonstop. So, and I made several donations. My first arcade machine ever. What are you going to do with it, man? This is such an awesome machine to own, man. This is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm going to put it in my brother's recording studio. I think oh, yeah. Nitro Sonic in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put it there. Do you go commit? Do you go Commando sometimes yourself? On uh, on really intense laundry days, I will be known to go Commando. All right, here's Rocky, the proud new owner of Commando, the man, the beast, the one-man army. So, so what just happened here, man? This is one of our Nintendo 64 demo units that we have set up so that people can, you know, you know, just see what we've got going on in the rooms itself. This young man sat here and defeated Mario 64, and I've never done that personally myself, and I think that's awesome that he did it at an expo, and I just wanted the, everyone to see what he did. All right, I'm here with uh, Adam. Adam. Yes, Adam. Yes. You just, just yeah, just beat Mario 64. Uh -huh. Yeah, I came up here uh, yesterday on Saturday, and I saw they had the demo unit unit set up here, and I just thought that was so cool. And uh, I played Mario 64 a lot as a kid, but uh, and I, I said to myself, I was like, if that game isn't beaten on Sunday when I come back up here, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna beat it one go. And I did. Yeah, just got like 30 stars real quick, used a couple glitches, and got to Bowser. How long did that take you? Oh, it was about like an hour. Yeah, they already had a lot of stars already collected, so I just kind of like went off of that, but. It was really fun. Oh, the expo's been a lot of fun, man. Uh, yeah, I played in a couple of the tournaments, did the duck hunt thing, and uh, played in Street Fighter yesterday. It was a ton of fun. And uh, the pinball machines are amazing. So definitely like the pinball. So what's your top three favorite games of all time? Oh, wow. Um, top three favorite games of all time. Uh, Street Fighter, any of them. Yeah. <laughs> any of the Street Fighters. Uh, let's see. Halo 2, not any of, in none of the other Halos. <laughs> you don't know any of the new no, Halos. No, none of the All other ones. Halos. And um, Mario, just any of them, whatever. Mario is always classic. So. Well, you heard it from Adam, the uh, slayer of Bowser on Mario 64. Awesome, man. Awesome job, man. Thanks, man.
What up? We're in the uh, 8-bit world. You know what I'm talking about. NES. This old school. The real the real deal console. The real men play. We're going to go in here and talk with uh, Kirk Millwood, who set up the Apple II setup in here. So let's go check out the 8-bit world. Let's go. I'm here with uh, Kirk Millwood. He did the Apple II setup here, here at the uh, Louisville Arcade Expo. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, I, uh, I'm in IT, professionally. Uh, been doing that for 15 years or so, but I've been in computers since I was about five. And the uh, first system I used was a, a Laser 128, which was uh, uh, an Apple II clone. And uh, you know, it's been hooked ever since. Uh, you know, it's what I grew up, grew up on, but you know, I had uh, Atari 2600. I played that primarily for games. You know, obviously on the Apple, uh, grew up on Oregon Trail and the, the, the mech uh, titles from <laughs> that were also developed by the same company. But, uh, so this, I mean, the Apple, the Apple II, this was like, was this like the first gaming system, would you say? This was, uh, this was the first, well, as far as uh, computer systems go, uh, this was a 16-bit system that was backwards compatible with uh, Apple IIe software. It came with a stock uh, 256 uh, kilobytes of memory. So the first Apple II was 64K. Uh, this one has uh, one and a half megabytes of memory currently. And uh, as you can see, it's got print shop running. Uh, it's been very popular here. Uh -huh. uh, people printing out signs, greeting cards, uh -huh. uh, mostly. Uh, there's a girl that designed a uh, can of spam in the uh, graphic editor oh, last really? night, uh -huh. and uh, made a custom banner. I remember these old; these are old school printers. Right, right. right. This is a dot matrix printer. Dot matrix printer. Yes. Uh, it's uh, Image Writer 2. Uh -huh. So uh, it was made specifically for uh, the Apple II and the Mac line. It okay. was out in 1986. Well, what do you think about the events of our? How? Uh, it's how been overwhelming. Can... I mean, it's been overwhelming amount of. Uh, that uh, mm -hmm. you know, people have been giving the systems. Yep. This room has been packed at times. Mm -hmm. uh, 35, 40 people in mm -hmm. here playing or waiting, waiting in line to, to play. Excite right. Bike, uh, Pitfall. What are what, what's your favorite eight bit game? Eight bit. I I was uh, I was playing Pitfall and uh, and Pac Man on twenty six hundred mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot when I was yeah. uh, when I was a kid. I would uh, compete. Uh, Compete against my mom uh, playing Pac-Man when I was you know, four or five years old. <laughs> so uh, that's one of you know probably one of the more fonder fonder memories. Uh, um, Kirk, it's nice talking to you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's time for roller games. Are you ready? Direct from the Super Roller Dome. It's Attempt to scratch the Violators' winning record. Can that dirty, rotten Mr. Mean make heartthrob rocker Brian Jacobson sing to a new tune? Will Dar the Star outshine Sweet Stephanie? Just wait and see. Plus, will the twins get back to the Teepers alive? All right, I'm here with the uh, Derby City Roller Girls, um, and. Let me introduce every one of you here. Celia Graves. Leia Face Walker. Gory Details. Um, well, Derby City Roller Girls was founded in 2006. Um, we have two teams. We have an all-star team that, uh, that travels. Um, we also just voted in to place a B team, so we're going to have two teams now. Um, we're really excited about that. With, I just talked to uh, Jeremy and uh, Joe. And they've been setting up booths at your events too. So, uh, uh, what do you think about the arcade expo so far and everything uh, this weekend? I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's wonderful. Um, it, it's a great opportunity for Louisville. Um, it's it's been fun cross promoting with them. Um, it's 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 good. It's it's finally something like this comes to Louisville. I think it's a great thing. We play at uh, the Skinny Rink on Manslick. Yeah. It's a uh, Manslick Roller Drum. And we have games about once a month. What is the worst? Who has the worst injury story here? Yes? Uh oh. <laughs> I've broken my collarbone twice. Oh, wow. Yeah, and snapped it. Um, separated my shoulder, uh, torn my uh, the meniscus in my knee. I've sprained my ankle about six times. 
Wow. A couple concussions. <laughs> Say that with such a su- such a big pretty smile. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't laugh about it, then you're gonna cry about it. So I'd much yeah. rather laugh about it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, DerbyCityRollerGirls.com. Mm-hmm. We have our schedule. Um, you can, there's also links to the uh, Women's Flat Track Derby Association website, and it explains about the sports, uh, the rules, and how the game works. Mm-hmm. If you have any questions about that, and um, buy yeah, you can buy our tickets online, and we have a link to merch. We have a Cafe Press website now. You get all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so yeah, you should check it out. Right. Heard that? So go check them out. www.derbycityrollergirls.com. your artwork man this stuff is this stuff is really awesome man the league, artist league of Lul. yeah it's just something i started uh at the beginning of this year this is the second show that we did uh and really uh it was kind of came out of me uh you know you put a blank piece of paper for me and i'm just kind of like you give me guidelines uh you know limitations uh time limit a deadline i can get something done uh, but like I said, when I get carte blanche, it's just like I kind of freeze. Uh, so I kind of figured there might be other people like that. So I started, you know, sending it out on Facebook, being like, hey, anybody interested in, uh, you know, doing this? I'm going to have a theme show once a month. Uh, try to decide on, uh, you know, we'll, we'll all kind of come to an agreement on what we want to do theme for theme. And, um, and when we decided we want to do our video games, it was just kind of incidental, really. And they... Uh, some one one of the people in the group was like, well, you know, there's this arcade expo going on. And I was just like, no, I didn't know that. Did you do any of these right here? I, I did this right here. Now this is like a. This reminds me of River City Ransom. Yeah, my favorite game, man. Yeah, of all time. I, I just. I was kind of strained for how I wanted to do it. And my girlfriend's kind of been getting on me lately for never using her for any of my art. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll do like a portrait of her and of me. So this is me, uh-huh. and this is of her. And I was like, but I'm going to do it in River City Ransom style. So where can people find that online for that? Uh, I mean, I wish I had like a neat uh, website uh, address for it, but it's we're on Facebook. It's just like a Facebook group that's uh, Artist League of Louisville uh, is the name of the group. So, I mean, if, if you put that in the search engine of Facebook, you should be able to find it. There's a club and a group. Um, but the group is the one that, like, if you're interested in uh, joining or adding uh, art to any of them. And it's not always video games. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, like, we've got one uh, that we're going to be involved with in May that's, like, the ones of Empire Strikes Back. I like this one, the pipe, the, uh... That was just kind of incidental as well. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the other, uh, one of the other girls that did a couple pieces, she's like, I have that at home. Like, I don't even think she has any intention of like getting rid of it. She's just was like, I think I'm gonna bring it up to display it. I was like, <laughs> do it. Wow, incredible. Um, so Jared, Artist League of Louisville, man. It's, yes. it's great to uh, great to talk to you, man. Great work, man. Thanks. Love it. <laughs>